And so if I just look at Google Trends, which tells me what people are searching on, mm -hmm. if I look at how Google auto completes, which tells me what they want me to see is what other people are searching on in the search bar. Right. If I look at what stories aren't being run, all of the dead stuff is astounding to me right at the moment. Like I know, for example, that people are fascinated by the Jeffrey Epstein story. Mm. And yeah. in general, like, you know, we just had, right. So normally I don't love talking about current events because it dates the program, but we just had uh, Kevin Spacey's accuser uh, reported as dying. I don't think that that is likely to be part of some super evil plot. So right. just so people can calibrate, it's not that everything that could make sense because there's an incentive I chalk right. up to a conspiracy. The Jeffrey Epstein thing is totally different. And you and I both met this guy um, for 15 years, and he's the only person I've been saying this with conviction about for 15 years. I had one meeting with him. I've said he's a construct. Somebody hired a person, probably named Jeffrey Epstein, to play a role, super genius, me mega billionaire philanthropist. I wasn't buying any of it. I've never bought it, and I've talked to everybody in our sort of mutual network, mm -hmm. and I always used one word because I wanted to make a huge bet that when the time came, I would say he's a construct and that I would be revealed to be correct. And that everybody always asks, what do you mean by a construct? Right. Okay. Do you need to, have you clarified that on your podcast before? Probably not. Okay. I, I, I recorded an entire Jeffrey Epstein episode, which is just me soloing for an hour. Right. But I haven't released it because I'm terrified. Huh. And I've had one ambiguous dinner where somebody sort of quasi threatened me and I wasn't entirely sure what they were saying. It was a little bit huh. creepy. Um, well, this is a, uh, a strand of human complication that you're way more in touch with than I am. I don't deny that it exists, right? So like, I think there are real conspiracies and the, and powerful people occasionally, you know, do what uh, well, p powerful people are occasionally sociopaths and then they, then they do what you would expect or conspire to do what you'd expect. Um, so I don't have a strong feeling about well, let's just take the some, likelihood some... that Epstein was was had a facilitated suicide. I think the likelihood that he was murdered is is low, but I, I'm allowed agnostic. to commit suicide. I don't have a strong. I'm agnostic about that. Whether whether people stepped away so that he could do the thing that he right. needed to do, whether there's some vanishing probability that he actually isn't dead, I don't know. Uh, Not interesting. That, I put that at, at very low. Yeah. I put that at very low odds yeah. as well. Yeah, but I, so but you, you, you know, at, I'm a fan you put of it this. At zero odds, Sam. Well, I wouldn't, I know enough about probability to, to put almost nothing in zero. It's a huge, but. huge difference between those people who insist, when I hear somebody insist that that probability be zero, I take it, right. and, but, and but that person is smart. But effectively, effectively zero. I mean, zero in the sense that I waste we don't no have time. to worry about it. I waste yeah. no time thinking about it at the moment. Right. But I'm happy to have my Bayesian priors tutored. Right. Okay. So I, I just don't have a, I mean, as you know, I, I'm taken in or, or, uh, I, I utilize this homily that you, you shouldn't ascribe to, to malice, what can be explained by incompetence or whatever that the formulation and is. And I find that that's a interesting heuristic for somebody. It's, as, u it's usually, I think it's usually true, right? So like it works much of the time and then it, it fails, but it fails in a case where you get more information and then you update. Your, well, that's what, you that know, was, that was exactly my point that the Kevin Spacey thing I would say is in the realm of Newtonian mechanics. Right. And then the Jeff Epstein thing is like relativistic quantum field theory, whatever your Newtonian laws are, we're not in Kansas anymore. Right. But I had no, so I, you, you put me in the same room with him, so I should probably clarify that. So I had, I found myself- Would you both apologize? Nothing yeah, happened. Yeah, that's right. Um, I, uh, I found myself at a lunch with him at the TED conference mm. and had no insight into him or what he was up to apart from the fact that he, you know, my sort of creep detector went off. I and I it spiked like crazy. Yeah, I mean, I just, he was someone who I didn't want to spend any more time with because he had this sort of uh, schlocky, rich guy. Uh, but within uh, normal? I, I, well, no, no, I mean, it's just, but like when you see a, I guess he was probably, you know, close to 60 at this point and, uh, you know, He's with a you know twenty one year old you know it's like it's like the, the optics of that are all I mean it's, the, obviously there are many rich guys who do that you know and there are many you know, certainly many people in Hollywood who do that 
And, you know, that's just the way people, some people roll when they have the opportunity to roll that way. And that, okay, fine. But he, there was just a, I have a kind of a level of, you know, judgmentalism around that. Right. You know, it's like at minimum, that's a, a, uh, an attractor on the, on the landscape of, of being that is, uh, not all that interesting to me. And so when you see someone captivated by that, like this is like life is going great because I'm 60 and she's 20, right? Like that's right. the one variable that, that We're accounts talking for about his Lamborghini right. all the time. Exactly. Yeah, right. right. It's like, okay. Then you've, you've, you know, you've bored me already. Um, so, uh, but I had no more insight into him than that. I mean, I, I maybe exchanged so didn't re- you know, three sentences to, with him. From one meeting, I've been talking about him for 15 years. Right. Yeah. Because this was like a 10 person lunch. Okay. And I had maybe, you know, three sentences exchanged with him, you know, so. So mine was at his house. Right. Um, I'm ushered into a waiting room. He's got some super complicated electronical electronic art. I get up, I look at it, and I say, wait, is that is that a camera inside the art? <laughs> I first think I'm a genius for finding a camera inside the art. Yeah. My next thought is I'm supposed to find the camera inside the art because the the can the art is supposed to draw my attention and I'm supposed to see that I'm being recorded. Um I'm called out to a uh, room in back with a huge, long, sort of exaggerated dining table with a giant American flag as its tablecloth so that any food or drink that is served on it may spill onto an American flag. Right. And I'm just in high alert, like, fuck you. Who, who, who are you? Right. And he comes in and he's got this attractive, again, over probably 22, 23 year old woman. I think she's introduced as an heiress or something. Right. And he's bouncing her on his knee uh, in order to get the, my attention. There's some other guy who says nothing during the meeting. Oh, I have no idea what he was doing there. And I think I, one detail I'd like to add here in defense of the many people and the many scientists who were in this guy's orbit and who didn't know how uh, unseemly his life actually was. Uh, some of these young women who you'd meet in his company were not just, you know, bimbos or strippers. Or I mean, some of these people were going to medical school, and these were, these were like smart young women. Well, who were, and and, a, who, who and were adult. Benefiting no, no, this is an incredibly important distinction. I don't think that the news media has done a good job of teasing out. It's very attached to the idea of pedophile island and Lolita Express, right. and that lazy sensationalist journalism is crowding something out. Which is that, in general, from what I understand. So I met him in 2000, I think 2004, maybe 2003, but before his Florida uh, incarceration and and charges. Mm. Most people that I knew who met him, met him with young adult women. And so my theory is that he was constructed to be the sapiosexual Hugh Hefner. Right. And that they stupidly hired, probably, and I guess I don't know this, uh, Humbert Humbert for the role and that right. that dichotomy explains at least a lot of the initial um, willingness of the science community to play with this person. That I, I mean, I'll be honest, I'm not particularly judgmental about consenting adults, even if it's probably ill-advised uh, you know, to have a 50 year spread between two people. Right. If somebody's 20 and somebody's 80 and they it's both- just, It's a completely different thing. It's, it's very easy to see that if you've seen this guy right. be uh, sort of the womanizing schmuck Right. In, within the bounds of, you know, total legality. You know, he's surrounded by 20 year olds and, you know, he's got a, a 40 year And everybody's in age. party to the game and you would, something about you, money. You, whatever. Would never, Just, you would never suspect this other thing about him. Right. right? Okay. So that is not a fair defense after the Florida situation. The Florida situation changes that structure. You mean his, his, prosecution or, well, or the, a lot the Miami it, Herald thing a, that came out like a, lot, a year ago? Or no, no, no. The prosecution. Right. So a lot of people continued to talk to him in part because, and I think this is something that hasn't been teased out, um, he was supporting a an older style of science, which this is again something that's going to be super complicated. Uh, was much more disagreeable. Now, the woke movement has seized on this as, well, that's the cowboy oppressive science of um, male assholes. But he was supporting a network of people who might not have been supported otherwise to somewhat break out of the mold. And because the U.S. government had stepped away from that work in in large measure, in my opinion, 
people were so dependent on him that they were eager to look the other way. And there was also the hint, I think, that this wasn't really Jeffrey Epstein, that this was really something else funding them. 